I wanted to talk to you about our gravity flyer and amplification of energy, how not to do it and how to do it. Now lately in videos you saw me take my gravity flyer and I blasted it with some high voltage. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, when it's done wrong, all you get is the light show, and that's not very good for anyone. It really is not helping the project at all. It looks super cool. Don't get me wrong. I love to do it all the time, but it's not going to help this project. So, we also looked at the amplification another way. A lot of people say, can you put magnets on the top and magnets on the bottom? And what would it do there? Well, let's take a look. Now that you've seen both of those tests and you understand where we're at, those two things are not going to help us at all. It's also not going to help us to change materials. A lot of people want to put a piece of metal in the center plate. They want to put a piece of copper in there. And really, guys, we need that eddy current in there and we need the actual voltages in there to push out and try to pull itself back in. It's part of what makes the actual field on this thing work. So, what does that mean? It means, all together, we're trying to create a gravity well here. And one of the problems in our gravity well is our Tesla coil field just isn't strong enough. Now, you know I just went through some power things and I showed you some voltage out of control, but the one thing I didn't show you was the Tesla coil being correct. And it goes down to a simple understanding of this. This craft only amplifies when it's sitting on the ground. Now I've had it on the table, I've had it on a big piece of tile, everything. The only time you get an amplification point in this craft is when it's sitting on the ground. And what is the only thing that makes it worth the extra energy when it's sitting on the ground. It's the Tesla coil. It's the only thing that creates a capacitor to ground. The rest of the circuits can be sitting on top of this thing or in a little cage and they'd be just fine. This circuit is a capacitor to ground. So what happens? When you actually put a ground to it, you're going to get an amplification point in your gravity flyer because then it works as a capacitor to ground. If you do not do that, it is very important if you do not put a ground into this Tesla coil when you connect it to your gravity flyer, the amplification point is 20 times harder to find. <laughs> it just picked up a lot of energy as soon as I tapped that thing. You will find it on a rarity. You might even pass it up because you're not in the correct octave of this craft. So, what does that mean and why am I trying to amplify our Tesla coil here? Well, I found this. When you actually want to take your, we'll go back to the static here. You have the static inside, right? You have this Tesla coil field that's holding that static inside. You cheat it by you taking a dryer sheet and you put it on top and it blows that Tesla coil field out. And then it puts the field on the outside of the Tesla coil as well as on the inside. That dryer sheet wreaks havoc on all the electronics around you because the Tesla coil field is designed to hold it in or push it out. And by reversing the fields, 
and putting the high voltage on the center plate and putting the tester coil on the two discs, you realize that it's pushing the field out. When you switch the configuration back and you put the tester coil to the center plate and you put the high voltage to the disc, you realize it's holding it in. Now because of that, you understand another feature. If you can cheat it by overrunning this thing and putting too much of the actual static energy into it, then it'll hit an overlap point where it comes over the end of the Tesla coil field and then pushes out. Let's push it in some more. See if we can't get that thing to go off. Yeah, no computer going off. There it goes. All right. Well, I, I shouldn't do that. Probably blow up my computer. This is very bad to do. We don't want that. We actually want to get to the point where the fields line up. And then we have something good. I've been trying to say this lately to the people and I don't think they understand this. I want ozone. I want a substance thick enough to hold in a gravitational field. I need ozone. And this thing creates plenty of ozone in the high voltage, creates plenty of ozone in the Tesla coil, but it doesn't hold it in. It is something that cannot be trapped in this as of yet. So what am I looking to do with this Tesla coil? I want that amplification of energy that we're getting when we hit that higher resonance point in our gravity flyer. I want that field to thicken. And when I say thicken, I want it to be able to hold in certain things that it can't hold in now. We can hold in the static volts because we can keep them low. But I want to be able to hit a point where the ozone itself is helping to form the layer on the outside field. We see it in our magnetosphere. We look past it as this little bubble that goes around our Earth. Please understand there's a reason it's there. It has to thicken in order to not let that static field, when I want to build it up more, that it'll actually hold it in. That's the missing element in this. We do not have our Tesla coil right. Now, I've created one Tesla coil. I'm working on a second one right now. My first one works great to find everything. It doesn't work great to hold everything in. And I know a lot of you out there look at Alexi's thing and try to stay to his numbers on there. I'm telling you, I've seen his schematics. He flat out made stuff up on there. So when you actually look at your high voltage circuit, he put a bunch of diodes in there and he put a bunch of uh, capacitors in there that don't belong there. Now he said that they were just basically how the flyback works, but the flyback doesn't work that way. Not with that many capacitors. A lot of people pointed out, I built it guys. I've completely built that circuit and it's junk. So that's not right. I think he just used a basic picture of a Tesla coil because when you actually look at his Tesla coil and the circuits, they're not anything like it. They, they don't, his, First Tesla coil circuit looks absolutely zero. I mean zero like a Slayer Exciter circuit. But what he wrote in his diagram was a Slayer Exciter circuit. I don't think it's right. And I can tell you it's not right for one reason. When you run these Tesla coils enough, you know the distance. You know exactly what you're going to get out of it. It's not a mystery here. You just have to put up the light and find out where it stops. That's it. The problem is his goes back five to six feet and then some. So he can sit back there with his uh, Garrido meter and he's reading the actual field on it and he's five to six feet back from it. Guys, you're not getting that out of your little Tesla coil with your Slayer Exciter. I'm sorry. You got two feet max at the best one that you can build. Okay, that little cheap circuit with a Z44, junk. Okay, absolute junk. It works for great little desktop thing. You want to mess around, not screw up your computer. Perfect. However, for what we're doing, not going to work. Okay, it's just way too small of a field. He's creating a bigger field. Now, let me just tell you this about the Tesla coil that you may not understand. This Tesla coil works like a magnet. So, you know it's a magnetic field and it pulses and it goes into your secondary and then that pulses, right? But when you rotate it, and I've never seen a lot of people rotate this, so it's kind of hard to understand. When you put it on those discs and rotate it, it's creating spheres from it. So what do I mean? You have a bubble. 
in the center on any magnet that you rotate. You have a bubble like this. And then it has another level here and another level here. What are those different levels? It's the amount of energy drop off out here, less, in here more, right here, absolutely the greatest point in the world. And right next to it, you're going to get the highest value. This is exactly what this Tesla coil is doing when you rotate it on any one of these discs. It actually creates those spheres of energy. We're looking for the strongest one. So, what would be best on this craft? If I were to redesign it, I want a rotating disc on the outside of the actual frame of it so that I can get a field like that that turns. We always want it to turn. Everything in turning, everything always in pulse. This craft works on that. So, in order to get this right, we're going to have to change this a little bit. I need that Tesla coil to be like that magnet. I need that energy point to actually amplify this. So, let's go back to the grounding a little bit so that you understand this. I put my gravity flare on the ground. I'm hitting it with the right octave, right? I'm tapping on the center plate. Normally, that's the job of the piezoelectric disc. That in itself changes the octave in your actual gravity flyer. So, what does it mean? It's like singing out a tune. I'm just taking the singer, and I'm tapping on the vocal cord, and I'm actually putting that singer in tune. When I hit the correct tune, I hit an amplification point. It's just like taking that glass and singing into it and making it shatter. It's the same effect. I'm trying to hit the amplification point. You cannot hit it if you're not in the right tune. So you change the octave on the center plate. I tap it, get it in there. What happens immediately? My piezo buzzer starts going off. It's doo doo, tap, 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 click, click, click. Whatever you want to say that sound sounds like to you, it's exactly what it's doing. You know when you hit it. This thing has done absolutely zero for me, that piezo buzzer, for the longest time. <clears throat> it has absolutely done nothing. Now it's come alive and it won't shut up. It just keeps going on and on and on. I know I hit the correct point. I don't change the tune in my gravity flyer. It sits right here. I haven't changed the tune in it and I won't because I know exactly where the sweet spots are. I just need my Tesla coil to amplify. That's why I'm doing this. So let's go back to the ground thing. When it's on the ground, it's actually taking and making your gravity flyer the capacitor to ground. Because it's onto your Tesla coil like the toroidal, it actually will work as a capacitor to ground. It's pulling the energy from the ground to get the amplification. That's the key. If you run it in the air, I can't get the amplification point. If I run it on my tabletop, I cannot get the amplification point. When I put it on the ground, I get my amplification point. That's the whole key. You need the more energy. Now, you say, well, it's, if it's in the air, how are you getting the amplification point? It doesn't need it past what it gets from the ground. That's the key. In this actual gravity flyer, there's a loop of energy. The loop of energy will stay. You're hitting the correct resonance points. Now, when I say resonance points, there are five to six main points that amplify in this disc. And as you hit each one, each one amplifies at that time. So it's like a, like a safe lock. You're going through and you're turning it. You get one click, you got to turn it again, you get another one, another one, until you get all the little pieces of the safe unlocked. It's the same way here. You want to hit each one of those amplification points. It's a very difficult task. It's why you can't just plug it into the wall and turn it on. You have to be able to hit that. Now, when you get to the ground aspect of it, we'll go back to that, you're putting energy into it. The energy stays in there in a loop because it's going throughout those actual different points and amplifying it. And it stays in that amplification point. Once you hit the right value, and there's one in there that absolutely 
hits a massive voltage increase. We're talking that it almost doubles the input in this thing is how much voltage it picks up. So when you hit that, it'll stay in the craft. And as you tap that piezo buzzer, you're changing it in and out of an octave. Now, it doesn't change the full route. If you say there's six in there, and you tap it and you go to one, you go tap it, you go to the second one, tap it, you go to the third one. Well, basically when it gets to the right one, it'll stay there. And you tap it again, it'll push and move back. You tap it again, it'll push, it'll move back. And that's what's going on. It likes to stay in that amplified state. So it'll shift for a second and then push back. It will not go through the rest of it and go through the dial again. It doesn't work that way. It wants to stay right there to that amplification point. That is why you must find it in the beginning why it's on the ground. And if you don't, you're not getting anywhere, not going to help. A lot of people haven't seen the amplification point. I tried in the last couple of videos to show you that amplification point. And it's hard to see. It's when the craft actually out of nowhere just starts picking up the energy and you can see it. You can physically see it in the craft and that it actually picks up the energy. <laughs> it just picked up a lot of energy as soon as I tapped that thing. So why can Alexi do this without any instruments? Because he can see it. We always say that he can hear it, but he can see this craft. It reacts. Everything he does in it has a reaction point. Has an action, has a reaction. And every time that you find that reaction point, you're actually getting somewhere. You can't just sit here and look at it, you know, and say, all right, it's going, we're good. No, you must physically get the reaction point out of it. And it's very difficult. It's a very time consuming process. Guys, I test this thing about five hours every day. And it becomes very difficult if you don't to understand the nuances of this thing. I know a lot of you, it's just a weekend project. For me, it's more like a full-time project. Every time I turn around, I find a different point in this and I amplify it until I found the right point that amplifies all of it. And I have. And it's taken a very long time to get there. So when I tell you it's a capacitor to ground and we need to amplify the Tesla coil, please understand. I know that there's an amount of energy that I need to achieve for this thing to go anywhere. For it to do anything, I need to hit that point. Now, I've had a lot of people out there come out and say, well, you know, nobody's been able to replicate it. Nobody has been able to make this thing fly. It must be on a different way to do it. It must be a string. It's got to be a balloon in the air. It's got to be something else. Guys, we're building a UFO. We're not building a toaster here. We're building a UFO. It is not going to be easy. It is not going to be one of those things that you can flip on like a light switch. It is going to be a very difficult task. There's going to be nuances in this that will carry on to everything that you want to do in anti-gravity. You're going to need amplification points. You're going to need Tesla coil energy. You're going to need high voltage. You're going to need resonance. You're going to need to know your octaves. You're going to need to know all of this stuff. You're going to need to know capacitor to ground. You're going to need to know what the actual sound of the earth is. To know the fact that there's not just one resonance point in the earth, that there's probably 12. And you have to understand this, guys. There's a lot more to this than just flipping a switch. There's a greater understanding here that's going to take you through everything that you want to do in a UFO. And if you don't start to understand that, maybe you should. It's not just about one craft. This is about building every single one after it. And if you don't have the initial knowledge like this, it's going to be very difficult. So do I want to switch to another one? Do I want to switch to this? Well, it depends on what your reasoning is, guys. I have another whole project over here that has to do with the fields on this craft alone. That's all that I research on it. I have a secondary gravity flyer. 90% of the time it's hooked up to in order to understand the fields around it. Because I want to be able to push, pull, do whatever I want to and manipulate them in my own way. So that I can hit the correct points of everything. Then I keep my original gravity flyer right here in order to get it to the right thing that Alexi was doing and try to achieve lift. Then I'm going to start a third project, guys, and it has to do with more of a magnetosphere. I've always wanted to create one. 
Now I think I have the right understanding of everything and how it works to get there. And I do know that it's going to be completely different than both of these things altogether when I'm done. But it's going to take the understanding of the fields. It's going to take the understanding of the gravity flyer to get there. And that's going to be a whole separate project in the future. But for this gravity flyer, we need this Tesla coil field to be bigger. And when I rotate it on the top and bottom disc, I need it to thicken. I need ozone, guys. I need it to withstand ozone. It has to hold it in, has to create it at that point, however you want to see it, okay? Normally, we just take a craft and we put things around it like rings all the way around and then interconnect them and make ley lines all over this entire thing. We take a magnetic field behind it, push those ley lines out, and then we create the static on the field on the outside. That's how we're going to do it in a uh, magnetosphere. But on this craft, you have to get creative because it can't get to that point. So we're going to have to understand it in the nuances that it has. So we connect the center plate to our high voltage. We're able to get that field to actually push the high voltage out a little bit. We want it to stay in just right on that line with that Tesla coil. But we want that Tesla coil to be stronger so it amplifies out there and creates our ozone layer. Now, if we don't have an ozone layer, we don't have enough to thicken the actual bubble around this. This thing will be like a hump, of, a piece of metal on the ground and do nothing. It just won't do anything. It actually requires a field to be around it. That's the only way that it can work. If it doesn't have a thick enough field, it can't do it. And that's really what it comes down to. So my Tesla coil currently, my original one, it actually will go out 36 inches. I need another Tesla coil and I want to be able to push that thing if I can get eight feet, I'll do it. But I need at least six feet because I know that's what Alexi has in here. The guy can shine the light right up against his Tesla coil and still do a project that's four to five feet away from him and still be able to pick up all the fields. Guys, there, there's no greater understanding than understand distance when you're dealing with all these fields because that's what he's getting. He's not getting this little bubble that hangs around the gravity flyer and just stays there. It's getting a great big field. And when you understand that, you understand that you're grossly underwhelming your gravity flyer by not putting in the right Tesla coil energy. So, I'm building this one Tesla coil now. I actually got some uh, things in here uh, to be able to figure out exactly where my resonance point is so I can increase this. Now, if this one works, I'll be able to push this thing five to six feet. That's what I'm looking to do. So I'm putting a lot of faith in this. Hopefully it works out. Guys, I'm not a technical coil expert. So it takes me a little bit more time to get this stuff done. But doesn't mean I'm going to stop. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop researching. I only wish those who do build it and understand it better would stop showing me a light show and start showing me the actual ways to build this thing. And I'm not just talking the circuit. Sometimes I think people overcomplicate things. It doesn't have to be that complicated. I mean, it doesn't have to have 50 million parts to it. Get the correct parts and start there with that video. Hey, that'd be a great thing, right? All of us can then understand it. Not just, hey, you got to understand all the electronics here. Now, thankfully, we're finding different alternative methods to get here, guys. And you know what? I'm going to keep working on this project. I'm going to amplify the living daylights out of that Tesla field until I get it right. It's one of the only things that you can amplify in this. Again, I showed you the actual videos of the high voltage of the uh, fields. I've showed you everything that we need to know. It just needs that Tesla coil amplified. That's it. Once we get past that, guys, we're on to a whole new thing. We're going to be able to create the fields. We're going to be able to understand this. Okay, we're going to be able to actually put enough power into it to amplify enough to do something with it. Because right now, the energy into it is not great enough to overcome the actual gravity around it. And we're not creating a thick enough field right now in order to stop the gravity from taking it over. Now, I've had some people out there say, well, when you put the testicle of field in and it's cold and then it feels hot and it'll burn you, that's actually gravitational waves. I'd like to believe that. But then again, I'm not an expert in that field, so I don't know. What I do know is where exactly the energy points are. I do know that Tesla coil is one of the most important parts of it. So does it make sense that they could be right? Absolutely. 
and I would tend to believe on the side that they could be right. So, anyway, that's it, guys. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep amplifying this test of color. We're going to get this thing running, and we are going to kill this project one way or the other. I'm going to get this thing to actually push out a field that's just amazing to look at because I'm getting sick of the point where it sits there and I can get all the rest of the stuff right and I'm not getting it to lift because I didn't understand exactly which project Electric was working on. I figured that out. I went through and I figured out exactly the distances of where his Tesla coil gets him. And guys, we were just wrong. It, the basics are there on his schematics. The actual parts that he uses are not the same as the schematics. So there's something different in there. And I always come back to it's the inventor himself hiding something in his work. He's doing something that's kind of like this, but not exactly like this. And I do that a lot. You know what I mean? When I do things and I show things, there's certain things I don't want to show. But on this series, I've been able to show a lot of it. And there's things that I do behind the scenes, tests that I do that show me things that I don't show on actual videos. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it leads people in the wrong direction. It goes down a rabbit hole that I've already chased down. And it's not helpful to the whole project whatsoever. So I just don't show it. So anyway, we're going to amplify this Tesla coil field. So that's where we're at, guys. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things. Have yourself a great day. Thank you.